jetting through the skies above our nation in the aircraft of today is a breed of men who model themselves on 50 short but glorious years of history. They are the men of the Royal Air Force. Their planes are sleek, powerful machines. They themselves are among the most skilled pilots and technicians in the world. Yet only half a century ago, the force they served was born. At the Savoy Hotel, the first of many events to mark this year's golden jubilee of the RAF. Prince Philip was guest of honor at a Variety Club tribute lunch. There too was Earl Mountbatten. Dr. Barnes Wallace of Dam Busters fame. Jimmy Edwards, the wartime transport command pilot, and Group Captain Leonard Cheshire, VC, DSO, DFC. Decorations speak for themselves. Holder of the DSO, DFC, and AFC, squadron leader Neville Duke. Medals for bravery in the aircraft of yesterday. The giant jets of today's RAF, like the BC-10, encompass the world. Yet only 65 years ago, the Wright brothers managed to get into the air for the first time in their flimsy, underpowered machine. Little more than a decade after that historic flight, Britain was at war. The aeroplane was a fighting machine. The Royal Flying Corps, controlled by both the Army and Navy, was born. But the RFC was short-lived. There were squabbles and rivalry between the two forces. In 1918, the Royal Air Force was formed as another wing of Britain's strength. It was a strength that proved itself in those bitter years of the Second World War. The Nazis were threatening our existence, and then the RAF began to hit back with everything they had. It wasn't much, but the men of the junior service were inspired by a great leader. Winston Churchill knew the value of mastery in the air. The Battle of Britain was both the grimmest and most magnificent chapter in Air Force history. The enemy was beaten back. Then it was our turn to strike. Bomber Command threw its entire weight into the offensive. Overnight, heroes were made. The dambusters, led by Guy Gibson, earned their place among the greats of our nation. Squadron leader Gibson and his men were congratulated by the King following that successful raid. For the man who invented the bouncing bomb, Dr. Barnes Wallace, it was a proud time too. To men like these, we owe so much. They were a few, a happy few, a band of brothers. Douglas Bader, the legless ace. Stanford Tuck. Men like these put their mark of inspired greatness on those who were to follow in the Royal Air Force of the Jet Age. Marshal of the Royal Air Force, Lord Tedder, a man with a special place of honor in the role of those who led us to victory. Prince Philip, a man who loves to fly and is proud to wear the uniform of Marshal of the Royal Air Force, understands the spirit that is deeply rooted in the officers and men who also wear the blue of the world's first Air Force. Germany, where once they were our foes, there is the hand of friendship. A friendship of peace, of keeping peace. For the RAF plays a vital part in maintaining the balance of world power. Its V-bombers, armed with blue steel, are always at the ready. In the safe keeping of these V-bomber crews is a destructive power undreamed of half a century ago. God forbid they should ever have to use it. But the planes and men of the armed service, which celebrates its 50th anniversary this year, can be relied upon to perform their duty unfailingly. We have put our trust in them before, we trust them now. They have won our gratitude. Their heritage is 50 golden years. Ours is a freedom we owe in no small measure to them.